So how, how would you describe the impervious browser and how it works to someone who maybe is familiar sure. with Bitcoin, maybe has used Lightning, but doesn't really have a strong technical understanding of peer-to-peer -peer technology and, and how it actually differs from what they're using today? Sure. So the impervious browser uh, provides a suite of peer-to-peer -to -peer tools for communication, data transport, uh, payments, and identity management built into a privacy focused web browser. Um, so it's a way to more easily control your data payments and comms. The reason we chose a web browser is because it's become a de facto virtualized operating system where it's where you spend a majority of your time where you're not on third party apps and services. So it's a natural aggregation place. And also, um, it allows like a building block for you start with these tools. You don't have to every five minutes, go to a zoom, go to a WhatsApp, go to a Slack, go to a Dropbox, go to a Discord, go to a Telegram. It's built into the browser. It's peer to peer. And you can start challenging assumptions, which is you, you realize like, hey, if I don't need these third party intermediaries for 80, 90 percent of the technology uses for streaming content, for gaming, then why are we using them to begin with? And what unique value proposition do they have? So we unify that in the browser and the browser itself is a privacy preserving browser. We don't collect telemetry data. We don't track and sell users uh, information or data um, or crash reporting without permission. Um, uh, we don't collect it. Um, but most importantly, it's a way to think, hey, you have these third party, what would typically require third-party tools and services, messaging, email, file transfer, payments, all built in, and then you can build out. And um, we think it's a great vehicle for the future of the internet. Um, and then we can build everything out from VPNs and, and other um, complementary services. Very cool. So as I understand then the, like I can use Impervious as my day-to-day -day browser and it's, it's a privacy protecting browser for all of my you know, sites that I want to visit on a day-to-day -day basis. And then I also have these handful of apps that you guys have built uh, into the browser being, you know, there's chat, there's uh, video, there's live, live yeah. documents and, uh, and file sharing, I believe, and payments. Yeah, exactly. Uh, and more to come. Uh, I think that's precisely right. And I think you should. It, look, it's open source. Um, it supports all Firefox extensions. So if you have a favorite ad blocker, you have like a third party like plugin or extension, you're good to go. Um, and now you can start normalizing and guess what? As the greatest call to action that we've seen in Bitcoin Lightning history is it's the first Bitcoin Lightning native web browser. Like, what does that mean? It doesn't mean that every time you go to a website, you're, uh, uh, you're conducting a, a lightning transaction. What it means is that you can use the web browser as a command and control and signaling layer for your, uh, for your lightning node. It can be virtual, um, like via voltage, or it can be like a physical one, like, uh, umbral, but you can use it not just for sending and receiving of payments, but you can use it to route information and you can use it to traverse asymmetric NAT and offline storage and all kinds of cool stuff. Uh, but it, it's not an in state. It's a call to action to go, wow, what would the users like to see? What is the capability? Do you enjoy knowing where your data is stored, how it's routed? Do you enjoy getting around corporate firewalls? If HTTPS and WebSockets or uh, WebRTC is failing, maybe you should try to provision the call and route it through layers and layers of, of onion of encrypted networking, uh, which is, uh, you know, Lightning Network is almost like an incentivized tour and uh, it can provide additional protections and incentive structure and then payments are built in the rail. So we're in the browser, which we were doing earlier, you know, we can send and receive payments. We can use either Lightning, you know, quick send or you can generate and send and receive an invoice, but it's all peer to peer and then encrypted uh, and it's off platform, off network. So if you're streaming content, if you're giving a seminar, if you're an educator, anywhere in the world, borderless, permissionless, streaming payments attached to information, that is the economy. It's like attaching PayPal to eBay, you know, to, to Twitch and, you know, to OnlyFans, but it really is. And um, as we build our marketplace and greater capability uh, and, and uh, larger multi-party rooms and in chat, you start to see, my God, 
what am I using these third parties for when it's no one's business, you don't need permission and it's unlimited. Um, you see some of these, you see some of these fee structures as kind of arbitrary. 